Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. I love the nurses that come and see me. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Since I learned about Angel Care, I would recommend them to anybody. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to the producer of our series and the guy behind the camera, Jeff Durall. We're at the Hayes City Commission uh, Chambers with Assistant Hayes City Manager Jacob Wood as we talk about projects uh, from last year in a review and also a look ahead to 2017 for the City of Hayes. Uh, just to review a little bit with our Assistant City Manager, uh, formerly worked in Oakley. Yeah, that's correct. I've been here actually uh, just about a year, just a little bit over a year. So settled in, really enjoying the community and look forward to a, a long stay here, I hope. Let's uh, get into some of the review, if we could, of 2016 and a look ahead. Uh, you want to start with roads, Jacob? Yeah, sure. I'd like to start, start out with streets. Uh, we spent about $1.7 million uh, on street repairs uh, in the last year. Um, we didn't do any major repairs in 2016. We did kind of some of the minor stuff, crack seal, uh, chip seal, microsurfacing, patching, those sorts of things that we do on an annual mm -hmm. basis. Uh, probably the biggest project that we did in, in 2016 was some mill and overlay work. We did that on Hall Street and, and some areas of 27th Street, kind of in the Hall vicinity. Uh, mm -hmm. So those were the kind of the big projects that we did. Um, we didn't do any huge major street replacement uh, years past. Um, like in 2015, we did 13th Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually finished that maybe in the first month of 2016. So I guess we could count that for 2016 mm -hmm. if we wanted to. Um, but we didn't, didn't have any real big projects on the docket. Um, and the, the reason we didn't is because of the way that we fund, uh, we fund our, our street repairs. Uh, we fund our stuff uh, as a pay-as-you-go, which means we don't take out a lot of debt unless we have to. Um, so we save up money over time, and as we have enough money uh, in the pool uh, to do a larger project, we do that. So in 2017, we actually do um, have a larger project on the docket. Uh, we have 8th Street um, from Milliner to Vine, which will be about a $2.5 million uh, replacement. Um, we're going to pull the whole thing out and replace mm -hmm. everything uh, in that area. Um, we also have about $1.2 million um, in maintenance, the, the, back to the general crack seal, mm -hmm. chip seal, that sort of stuff. About $1.2 million planned for 2017. Anything uh, happening uh, on Hall Street north of, uh, what, 41st, I believe it is? At, at this point, we don't have anything planned for that. Okay. Well, let's talk about uh, the park situation. Where are we on parks, Jason? Yeah, um, parks, we've been pretty aggressive over the last couple of years trying to get restrooms uh, to, into mm -hmm. most of our parks. Um, and we've, uh, we had a new restroom going in 2016 in Kiwanis Park, and we're going to continue uh, with that in 2017. We've got a, a couple of restrooms we're trying to uh, place. We're going to put one or replace the one in Seven Hills Park, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll also replace the restroom in Abel Bickle Park. You'll also see that we're going to have a, a new restroom um, at UP Park downtown, and that's, a, that's actually a project that's in conjunction with Downtown Hayes Development Corp. They're actually uh, funding um, the placement of that uh, mm -hmm. that restroom. We'll, we'll do some of the groundwork and put it in and order it and do those sorts of things, but it's really going to be paid for by DHDC. So you'll see some additional mm -hmm. restrooms and some upgrades of the restrooms go in um, in the next year. We'll also be putting in some uh, sidewalks and some of the mm -hmm. parks that, that need some additional sidewalk and sidewalk replacement in the parks. Um, and we also plan to put in a shelter house at Abel Bickle Park in 2017. So pretty aggressive. Uh, the, the restroom thing is really a big deal. It's a big deal for, for people in the community that want to go out and, and go and use the parks and not have to walk all the way back home or, or whatever uh, to use the facility. So um, we're really trying to be aggressive about that over the next couple of years and get restrooms in places where we feel like they're really necessary. Speaking of that UP Park, uh, anything on the pavilion uh, discussion that had taken place in uh, uh, week and months past? Well, um, we are pushing forward with that project. Right now the city's in the process of negotiating a lease with Union Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we'll, we'll be able to, in the next 30 to 60 days, say that we have a, a solidified lease mm -hmm. with them. So that'll be something that's coming up uh, that we'll take to the commission before too long. So we're, we're still working that. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get on the same page with the Union Pacific, um, but we're, we're really working towards that, that goal. And, and hopefully 
uh, once we have that lease in place, that's really the last kind of piece in, in, the, in we'll be able to pull the trigger and, and get things moving on that project. Speaking of, uh, for years our uh, city manager, Toby Doherty, had expressed some uh, fair amount of frustration with uh, Union Pacific on crossings and such. 8th Street, Elm Street crossings, things like that, that uh, can get pretty rough without the attention sometimes. Uh, so that pressure has to stay on, I guess. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, that's one of the things we really work with UP to try and get them to get on their schedule. And it is difficult. You really mm -hmm. got to find the right guy at the right time <laughs> in order to push that. And obviously, we were able to do that and get four of those crossings replaced here in the last month or month and a half. Timing mm -hmm. wasn't great with the holiday season mm -hmm. and people trying to get downtown to shop. Um, but it's kind of one of those things when you're asking and, and UP says, yeah, we'll do it. Then you just say, okay, let's let's get it done and, and let's do it. And, and also, uh, what people might not realize is there's a lot of city crews that that spend some time um, with that project as well. We're really responsible for everything up to the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. So um, we had to kind of pull our guys off of what they were regularly doing and, and get them in there. Um, they had to drop everything and, and do some of the concrete work, and it's really turned out to be a pretty good um, a pretty good project and good process to get through all that. In uh, our uh, community connection with uh, now 111th Representative Eber Phelps, uh, he referenced the uh, R9 Ranch uh, and uh, the Edwards County project uh, as far as water. Bring us up to date on water issues. I'm sure at this point, um, you know, we filed the application for R9. There's actually two processes that are working in conjunction right now. The first process is to take the water rights that we own and, and transfer those rights from an irrigation use to a, munis a municipal use. Mm -hmm. um, and we've, we started that process over a year ago. Um, the Division of Water Resources is the, is the state agency that is managing that process. We've had many, many meetings with them. Um, and over the next probably 30 to 60 days, there'll be some sort of a public hearing we anticipate uh, down at Edwards County to get their kind of say. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, uh, we anticipate that we'll be able to move forward with, with the first part of the process. The second part of the process uh, actually takes into account several other agencies, uh, Kansas, Kansas Department of Health and Environment, um, the Kansas Water Office and the Division of Water Resources all have a, they have a panel that will convene and they will determine when and whether and when we can move that water from Edwards County up to Hayes. So that's the actual transfer uh, part of the application and that application was also filed um, over a year ago but those two processes kind of have to work in conjunction with the other. So the first process has to has to go to fruition in, in order to get the second one um, to even be put on the table. So I anticipate that we're going to have some answers back uh, on that uh, during 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but it is a it is a long it's a long process, and this is something that's never been done in the state of Kansas before. Mm -hmm. um, so it's you know it's kind of it's new for us and it's new for them as well. So we're kind of all um, muddling through trying to get to the end point. But I do anticipate we'll have some some answers in 2017. Well, Jacob, I have to say too, as a, a citizen who watches the process, we appreciate work that you do on the part of uh, the uh, uh, city manager uh, as the assistant to jump through all these hoops to be able to bring this project along because there's a lot uh, involved, a complex yeah. process. Yeah, it, it's definitely been a process and a learning experience for all of us. I mean, both sides of the table are, are learning a lot through this whole this whole experience and, and hopefully at the end of the day we get what we want but uh, it's still kind of out there and we'll have to see. Still on water, how are we doing on conservation? Well, um, you know, we've, we've had the same conservation efforts that we've had in previous years. Actually, water use was down just a little bit this year. I don't have the, the you know, the gallon totals numbers on top, on the top of my head. Um, but we were we were down. We did do pretty well in conservation. We weren't, didn't have to go into water warning. We had rains at, at, at good times. Yeah, timely um, rains helped. The water tables, uh, both for the Big Creek well field and Smoky Hill, are in good good condition right now. Those rains mm -hmm. really did um, recharge those uh, those areas pretty well. So we're we're sitting pretty good right now. Um, you know, it just depends on whether it decides it's going to rain or not, mm -hmm. or whether we'll be able to continue with that um, as we move forward. Uh, back to the R9 just briefly. Russell's still in the mix, right? Uh, Russell County. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Russell, um, they're a player in this. They own a, a portion of those rights and they have been um, 
sitting in those meetings mm -hmm. with us, uh, you know, from day one. So they're definitely a huge part of this. And I anticipate uh, before too long we'll have some sort of a joint meeting with the city of Russell. Uh, the city commissions will have a joint meeting um, to, to kind of discuss where we're at in the process. Uh, and that'll probably happen in the next 30 to 60 days. I can't give you a, a solid date at this point, but um, I do anticipate that that's going to happen um, sooner rather than later. Jacob, there were a couple of things you wanted us to uh, know about. One is uh, some actions taken by the commission. Yeah, sure. Yeah. A lot of times um, when you're talking about the new year, you kind of look at the projects and the big things that people can see that you did. Um, and I'd like to just highlight a, a couple of things. One of the things that we did that's uh, really a big deal for the city of Hayes is we adopted uh, the Unified Development Code. And this is an update to all of our zoning um, regulations. And I'm not going to bore you to death with all of the details of that. But what we've tried to do um, over a two-year process, it was a two-year process to get this um, up before the commission and approved. And what we've tried to do with the Unified Development Code is make it easier uh, for people to develop their property. This particularly makes it easier for people that, that are in the older part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, you have a small lot. There's, there's, been, there's always regulations about the setbacks and how far you can build away from your property lines. And a, a lot of times somebody in an older part of the community has to go through a variance process that's a, you know, a six to nine month process to come before the planning commission in order to be able to build the property or build it out the way that they want to. Uh, what we try to do with the Unified Development Code is pare that back a little bit so those processes aren't so long and they're not so hard. Um, so somebody that buys a piece of property downtown by the university, they can develop it, do what they want with it, uh, have a little bit more leeway than they had in the past. So um, we're already starting to see some of the things come forward. We're starting to see some people, uh, there's a couple of houses that people have torn down and they're going to rebuild. Um, we've got some, uh, you know, multi-family dwellings that are going in around the university. So we're already starting to see it um, work a little bit and we hope that uh, people are aware that hey that it's not as hard as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, we really want people to be able to do you know what they want to do with their property and develop it to the, to the highest and best use uh, for the city and for the individual. Also uh, uh, good news for travelers I think from the Hayes Regional Airport. Yeah absolutely. Um, the airport um, is, is changing its flight schedules. Actually, uh, they'll be changed on, on January 4th. Um, we'll have a, a, we kind of begged and begged for them to come back to the early morning flight. We listened to the business community. Um, one of the things about the airport is we don't really have much control about the flights that come in and out of there. We have no control at all, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have been reaching out to the business community, you know, trying to find out what is it that we can do to, to help you um, use our airport more. You know, what can we do to make the airport uh, more usable? And one of those things that they all said is we would like to have an early, early morning flight back. Uh, we had an early morning flight uh, for a couple of years. Um, and then, it, you know, they took it away and they did that for business reasons. They felt that they could make more money in another market. Um, we kind of begged and we pleaded with SkyWest and finally they have decided that they're going to bring back that early morning flight. Um, so you'll be able to leave um, Hayes and go to Denver. The, the flight leaves at 6.50 a.m. Um, there's another midday flight at 5.55 you'll be able to depart and then we have returning flights from Denver to Hayes. One will come in at about 5.30 and then the other one will come in at about 10 o'clock and that, that plane will stay here in Hayes overnight and you'll be able to take off. So so really uh, with the new flight schedule you should be able to get anywhere in the United States, anywhere on the East Coast in, in one day's time. Um, so we're really anticipating that people are going to use that a little bit more. We've had some flight um, specials over the last couple. We've pushed SkyWest to try and do some, some special rates and fares and they, they did that um, and we've seen the numbers uh, for our, our flights increase by about 30 percent in the month of November. I don't have the December totals just yet, uh, but I anticipate that that's going to have a significant increase and, and hopefully um, we'll continue to see that um, on into the future. And we want to try to keep that above that 10,000 uh, boarding uh, threshold per month. Right. right. Um, we're uh, about a thousand a month is where we'd like to be. And we're, uh, we're uh -huh. about seven to eight hundred. Uh, um, some months are a little bit lower, some months are a little mm -hmm. bit higher, but we'd really like to get over 10,000 in a year. In a year. Um, uh -huh. So we're really kind of, we're getting close and I think if we continue to push and, and you know get 900 or a thousand flights a month, we had I think it was 900 and some in November mm -hmm. and I anticipate December is probably going to be a little bit higher and, um, and the flight schedule hadn't changed at that point. So yeah. Uh, so we think, uh, you know, and this is what the business community told us, is if we get that flight in, we'll be able to use the Hayes Airport, you know, even more. 
than they were um, in the past, and hopefully that's the case, and we'll be able to hit that 10,000 um, 10, mark. Jacob, thanks for your dedication to the city of Hayes yeah. and your work as assistant Hayes city manager. Jacob Wood, our community connection. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. My Angel Care physical therapist taught me how to do exercises safely. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. It gives us independence in our home. Angels Care Home Health, we serve patients.